different simulator areas in here. And a full day program is about five hours. Guests are going to go through every one of the simulators. The unique thing about the design of this is it's set up so that no one is ever just standing around waiting in line. Everybody is an active participant at all times. And what we do is we repeat missions with people moving from one position to the other so that everybody gets to do everything. We're going to put you on some of these and Rad and Sam will help out so that we can make sure you can do them because they're designed to be done in teams. So let me start by explaining our microgravity trainer, also known as the spacewalk trainer. Obviously on Earth we cannot flip a switch and have you float in microgravity. So NASA's had to come up with different ways to train the astronauts. Johnson Space Center uses the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, which is basically a big dive tank. We don't do that here, but we reproduce the general principles. We want to be working in an environment that's basically frictionless, so that every action on your part gets that equal and opposite reaction. So what we've done is we've engineered this. You can come on over closer if you'd like to get a closer look at the components. But each of these four stations is set up the same. There's a truss that's counterbalanced on weights, so that as you push on it, it's going to go up. And that would simulate if you were in space and you pushed and you drifted off. So we want to make sure that you are tethered to the trust that you're going to be working on. In order to give you that frictionless environment, what we're going to do is put you into a special chair. And you know what would be easiest? If we demonstrate this while we're doing it. So Sounds you want good. to come on over here. And generally you're going to have a partner who's in the training control center. And they're going to be relaying instructions to you. And you're going to receive that via headset. There's also a camera built in here so they can see what you're seeing. So if you would just put that on your head, right. fasten that over your chin, and you are ready to float. This is a hovercraft. You're now floating on a cushion of air, which means when I push you, you're going to keep going. We don't want you to go all the way out into space. So you've got some tethers. The red tethers here we're going to use on a safety line. Let me just show you how it goes. It goes on this line so it'll fly with you but I want you to put it on the line on the other side. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to use just your hands to travel up and down the truss. Use the metal portions of the truss to pull yourself. Don't pull on the cords. So go up and down a few times to get a feel for that. Good. If it starts to go up too high, just pull it back down. Now I'm going to give you a work assignment, okay? okay? What I want you to do is I want you to remove this unit. The first thing you're going to have to do is unplug it. In order to unplug it, you're going to pull the yellow button away from the unit and then twist counterclockwise. All right, good. Now, if you need both hands to work, you've got these white tethers on either side and you can tether into these fixed points so that you actually will have your hands free. Okay. I'm going to get you a tool. is held in on this screw. Mm -hmm. so what I need you to do is, this is the business end of the wrench. This is going to fit on the screw. So I need you to unscrew it, but remember something while you're working. You're in a microgravity environment, but that component is not. So if you don't hold on to it, it's going to drop and hit you. So position yourself and make sure that you don't let that happen. If you need, I can assist you by holding it in place.
that crust down a little closer to you. It looks like it's drifting away. Oh, there you go. to the end here. you walk around the Martian surface you're going to be in complete immersive virtual reality so you know you don't see out the bottom you will be on Mars you're gonna have a couple of hand controllers that you're going to use to uh, pick things up and also to operate instruments and you're going to do up to four different missions we're going to put a partner in training control who's going to give you the instructions for those missions okay okay Getting snug. I'm gonna put these over your ears you to face south. Okay, stop right there. Good. Go just to those rocks that are in front of you there. Is that first group of rocks there? You probably have to teleport there. Excellent. Now I want you to turn to your right and look down at your feet. Don't walk anywhere. Just look right down. Pick up that rock. Turn a little bit more to the right. Okay. There. Now look... Straight down at your feet, pick up the rock that's to your right. Yep, pick that one up. So you're going to pick it up with your right hand. Good. Okay. Now scan it with your left hand. Okay, that's a good one. So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, did it say that it was a good rock or a bad rock? It's an inbound sample. Throw it away. Pick up another rock that's uh, right there, though. <laughs> Look to the right. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now look straight down. Pick up whatever rock is right down by your feet. Yeah, if you turn Okay, try that one. If you turn around too much, I can't follow you anymore. Is that a good one? Throw it away. Okay. Don't, don't look around. Hold still. Freeze. Okay, because I need to see where you are. Blue squares? Oh, you got a sandstorm. <laughs> now I can't talk to him while he's in the sandstorm. He can't hear me. I can't see what he sees. So we just have to wait it out, but it's a lot of fun. Land and drive on Mars Simulator has several different levels of intensity. If you choose the easy level, you rattle back and forth and shake around a little bit as you land on Mars and drive to the Martian base. If you choose a harder level of difficulty, you'll either flip over once every time you make a mistake or flip over repeatedly until your partner in training control figures out how to make the rolling stop. 
So, which would you prefer for your experience? Difficult. Difficult, okay, <laughs> so we're gonna flip you around. Barry, you're going to drive to the green circles, okay, but green, Mike, I need green, you to give me green, X and Y grid coordinates as soon as they're available. Grid coordinate X, 1, 2, 0. Grid coordinate Y. And Y is 3, 2, 2. There used to be a restaurant up here on the left. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Coordinate X is 7-0. Launch mission, what we can take up to 12 people at a time in each of these simulators. We'll have six people in mission control, six people in the launch capsule. The people in mission control, if you come around, you can see this. And what they have is their instructions will come up on the line. So if they have a talking instruction, everyone's wearing a headset, they can either say talk for me or they can press the talk button, say the line that's indicated, or you can ad lib. And then you hit that again, and it's going to go to the next station. Each person, it's, it highlights as it's their turn to do something. So you're going to complete a variety of tasks. And you've also got six people out in the capsule. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually launch into space, dock with an orbital target, and um, then after the mission is complete, we switch. So the people who are in the capsule come in here, people who are in here go into the capsule. I do want to show you what the capsule looks like as well. So if you come on in here, you can see we have our commander and pilot, and then our other officers that are part of the flight crew. And during the course of the mission, when you're in here, you don't just see what's going on in the computer, it also shakes and rumbles. It's not a motion simulator, but you do get some uh, dynamics and some special effects. Once you're actually through the launch, all the windows open up, you can see orbital views, you'll see the spacecraft that you're docking with, little shots of the planet Earth. When there's... Um, a full component, we would have six people in here, six people in mission control. If you were having difficulty with something, you can talk to the other people in your mission area and they can assist with that. So the goal is to get the whole crew working together as a team to solve all the different emergency scenarios that come up during the course of the mission. Once the mission's over, everybody gets up, goes back into mission control, the mission control crew comes out here, and we run the mission again, but with different emergencies. So you get a little bit of variation going on. Definitely. 